In this video, I'll show you how to create and use groups in Canvas. Now, the first step is to create the groups. We're going to do that by going to the People tool. All right, and now we do not have any groups created in this course yet. I'm going to click on the Add Group Set to create a new group set. Now, a group set is a set of groups. Uh, that way, if you want students in one group for something like discussions and in another group for a project, you create a group set for each um, type of thing you want them to be in a group for. Um, so first, I'm going to go in and give this group set a name and say this is one for discussions. I will just title it discussions. All right, now there are three ways you can split the students up into groups. The first is to allow self sign up. That will give the students the ability to sign up uh, for whatever group they want to be part of. Um, the other two options, we can either create groups later. That's if you want to put students into specific groups that you choose what group they're going to be into, you're going to do the create groups later. You also have the ability to have Canvas automatically split the students up either by the number of students um, per group or just the number of groups you'd like there to be total. All right, so I'll show you that one first. Split students by number of groups. All right, and so if I know I want there to be three groups in my course, I will come in here and set this to three. All right, and then um, I can click on save and it is going to automatically create three groups within this set. It is assigning the students to those groups for me. And then I'll be able to save once it is finished. All right, so now we have this discussion group with three groups inside of it. Um, and each group set will have their own tab. All right, so I will create a second group set and say this is for um, a project. With this, I will do the number of students per group. And how many students do I want to be in each group? So say if I want two, then Canvas is going to automatically create as many groups as it needs so that there will be two students in each group. Again, I just click on the save. It will automatically assign students, trying to make the groups um, as even as possible. We might end up with a group of one or three if there's an odd number of students. And now that's been created two groups because I've got a small number of students in this uh, course. Uh, now, the last way, I'll create another group set. And let's just call this um, final project. Now, for this one, I'll click on the create groups later. I want to name the groups and I would like to um, choose which students are going to be in which group. I'm going to click save. And now here it's taken me. It's created the final project tab for this group. Uh, there are no groups set up yet. And you can see all the students lifted, listed on the left. So I am going to click the Add Group button to add my first group. You can be as creative as you would like to be with these. But I'm just going to say Group 1. Uh, and then I'm going to Save. And my first group has been created. Now I'll add my second one. And then I'll save. All right. And then create, keep going until you have as many groups as you would like. Now to add the users to the group, I am just going to click on a name on the left and then drag them over and drop them into a group on the right. You notice that student has been removed from the list. So you want to keep going until you see that every student has been added to a group. All right. And I have two students in this group and one student in that. So that is how you create the group sets and the groups. All right, now when you create a group, each group has their own uh, group page within Canvas. It's like their own little mini Canvas course. Um, as the instructor, you can access that by clicking on the three dots and then clicking on Visit Group Homepage. All right, now if I look here, I can see I am in Group 1's page. They have their own homepage, announcements, pages, people, discussions, files, um, Big Blue Button, which is the conferencing tool, and collaborations. So you can do any of these things with the students in this group, and they can use these for each other. They can share files with each other and create their own discussions uh, that are private to their group. As the instructor, you have the option here to switch group. So if I click that drop down, that'll allow me to quickly jump to that second group within this group set. And now I'm on the page for that group. 
uh, to get back to the main course, you're going to click on the instructor train. The, it's the title of the course is um, in the instructor training course. You click on the title there and you go back into the course. Now for students, it's even easier because we have all these buttons over on the left hand side. They will have one that says groups if they're a member of a group. They'll be able to click on that button, see all the groups that they're a member of and access the group that way. All right, now what can we do with groups? There are two main things people use groups for. Um, one would be for a group assignment. So I'm gonna to go to the assignments tool. I'm gonna to add a new assignment. I'll just name it group assignment. Um, all most of the stuff is the same. You enter your point value and all of that. How are they going to submit it? Um, how many attempts you want them to have. This is remembering the last items that I've ever put in before. I know they say unlimited. Um, if I want to add, turn it in or not. But this is the important one. I check this is a group assignment. All right, now by default, you enter one grade and everyone in that group gets that grade. You do have the option though to assign grades to each student individually. That way, if you want to choose what each student in that group gets as a grade, you can check that box and do that. But again, by default, one grade goes to everyone in that group. Now, this is the other important part. You have to select which group set am I assigning this to? Okay, so this is a group assignment. I uh, go in here and maybe this is my project, so I'm going to choose project. Now it will automatically assign this to the groups for that project group set. And then I would set all my other options and then save and publish. Now one student will be submitting this assignment for the entire group. All right. Um, if I go in for the grading portion of it, if I'm going to go in on my speed grader. All right. Now you notice up here at the top, rather than the student names, it shows you the group names instead. This test student is just a fake student in the course, but that's letting me know that this test student is not in a group. So if you ever came in here and saw a single student's name, that probably means they were not added to a group and you would want to make sure you take care of that before any submissions are made. All right, the other use for groups, um, which is used most often, is discussions. Rather than have students talking to every other person in the course, you create groups and set up discussions that are group specific. So I clicked on Add Discussion, Group Discussion, and then I would put my instructions that I wanted them to follow. Um, I'm going to choose my threaded replies. I want this to be graded. And now if I scroll down, where is it? Uh, this is a group discussion. So I'm going to check that box. Again, I need to choose which group set am I assigning this to. So I'm going to choose discussions. Uh, and then I would set all my normal settings and then I'm going to save and publish. Now for the students, when they click on this discussion, they are just going to be automatically taken to their discussion. But since you're the instructor, you have access to all three um, groups. So this would be group one, discussion one, discussion two, discussion three. So those are all three. So you can access them right here. Rather than having to go back to people and get into the home page that way, I'm just going to click discussion one here that is taking me to uh, discussion one groups page and it's taken me right into this discussion. So if I make this reply here, it is only going to go to my discussion one group. Again, I would be able to click this switch group and automatically go to group two. So here I am discussion group two. It's taken me to the home page. So I'll have to click on discussion and then click on that discussion to make a response or to read what the students had written. Um, if I'm here and I can't see the name of the course to get back to it, if I just click on the home page for this, I will then have access to the main course again. Um, now with group discussions, it is a discussion between group members only, but the speed grader is going to work exactly like it does for a normal. Once I click on the speed grader for this, it's just going to take me to each student so I can see the post that they have made. Now, a couple of important things. One thing is that you do not want to move a student from one group to another after submissions have been made. Um, that can cause a student to lose a grade. They've been graded on something and now they're no longer a member of that group 
or if um, they were the one that uploaded a paper for their group, they could lose access to the paper that they uploaded, or it could cause problems for the other students in the groups. So if for any reason you ever have to switch up, say their discussions are not working out with the people you have them, you would want to create a new group set and then move the students into that new um, into new groups and then assign new discussions to these new groups. Uh, you don't want to just move somebody from one group to another. Um, another important thing has to do with group uh, discussions. Um, you don't want to set those up too quickly because what can happen is that if I've got all my students in a group, but suddenly a new student signs up for my course on the fourth day of classes, they'll be listed here on the left and they will not be part of one of the groups. Um, and then if they make a post, it won't be part of anyone's uh, group. So no one will see that post that they have made. Uh, it can just cause problems. So you're better off waiting until you know all of the students have signed up that are going to be taking your class. Then you actually assign group discussions at that point. That's the safer way to do it. Uh, and real quickly here too on this page, if you click these little drop down, you can see who is in each group. That way if you're not sure which group somebody is in, that's how you can tell. All right, that is it for discussions. Um, contact the support center if you ever have any questions about how to do something with uh, discussions in Canvas.